All right, so in the last video, we covered Solar Warlock, and now we're going to move on to another solar subclass, and that's Solar Titan or Sunbreaker. Now, Sunbreaker is, despite having maybe not the most applicable damage supers to most raid bosses, and despite lacking a uh, reload assist like Threat of Ascent or Reload Dodge, uh, you know, Sunbreaker is by far the most brain dead, easy, straightforward, low effort, high reward day one build that you can ask for. Sunbreaker is absolutely insane in contest mode gameplay, uh, in minus 20 gameplay. You can hammer at, again, I've said this before, you could probably have a toddler play on your PC on Sunbreaker Titan and they would probably survive in a contest mode raid. It's absolutely brain dead and uh, explaining it should be fairly simple. So once again, we are going to be making this build with these three goals in mind, survivability, which Sunbreaker has plenty of, mechanical simplicity, which Sunbreaker has plenty of, and ammo management, which we'll get to in a second as well. So in terms of the Sunbreaker, uh, optimal Sunbreaker build for day one, what is the most consistent way to build Sunbreaker, uh, the most comfortable way to build Sunbreaker for a day one environment where you need to survive? Uh, let's talk about the three exotics that you need to bring. I would say there's only these three. Uh, they're all arm exotics. You have Syntheseps for increasing your hammer damage. You have Aeon Safe for finishing uh, champions, mini bosses, whatever it is, to make heavy ammo for your fire team. And then of course you have Pyrogale Gauntlets, a situational exotic that has kind of replaced Curus in some respects. Um, now you might have you might be asking you know why is there no lower life splendor helm why is there no something like curus in here uh, lower life splendor helm provides basically no benefit over the base sunbreaker kit now that it doesn't provide restoration times two and syntheseps you know the, the best defense is a good offense in destiny 2 and syntheseps hammers being able to kill big targets very quickly without using any ammo is a lot more valuable than lower uh, sunspot creation when you are getting low uh, on top of that you know why no curus uh, I don't think playing Arc Titan is necessarily uh, a good idea on day one, mostly because Curus is not an insanely notable damage super. On top of that, Arc Titan is a lot less survivable than something like Solar Titan, so that's why I'm recommending Sunbreaker for day one. That being said, if you have multiple Sunbreakers on your team for some reason, um, there are some other options, there are some reasons that you might run a different subclass, but we're going to be getting into that when we talk about uh, player team composition and player team roles. So now that we've talked about the exotics, let's go over the abilities, aspects, fragments real quick. Um, the aspects fairly obvious, no consecration here, just soul invictus and roaring flames. Consecration used to be pretty good back when charged with light mods were a thing, but now it's kind of a thing of the past with how long it takes to regenerate. And of course, not having soul invictus means no sunspots and not having roaring flames means your hammer does way less damage. So obviously these two options are the way to go. Uh, in terms of your abilities, Rally Barricade has a very low cooldown compared to Towering Barricade and provides a similar amount of protection on top of a reload boost. So that's a great option to have for maybe a final stand where your team doesn't have a Luna Well anymore. Uh, Catapult Lift is my personal preference. Throwing Hammer is fairly obvious. And I chose Healing Grenade over Fusion Grenade because realistically speaking, in a day one, having a grenade that does an okay amount of damage and maybe gets you some stacks is a lot less useful than being able to heal yourself with that Cure proc in a pinch uh, in case your Sunspots are not available or you are in a dire situation. Now let's talk about Fragments. So Fragments, we have chosen Ember of Searing, Ember of Solace, Ember of Torches, and Ember of Mercy. So Torches is a fairly obvious pick. Titan has an infinitely refreshable powered melee, so you basically have infinite radiant, which is awesome. Uh, Ember of Solace means that that radiant is going to extend for longer, even if you're not hitting an add. And of course, that restoration that you're getting from your sunspots, as well as from your fire sprites that you're making off your melees, is also, also going to be extended in case you don't have any melee kills or any adds near you during a place where you're taking damage. And finally, the two fragments here, Ember of Searing and Ember of Mercy. Searing helps you make fire sprites, and Mercy means that you get restoration off of them, which is further extended by more sunspot and hammer kills, which of course plays even deeper in into the Sunbreaker build that we're talking about today. Um, that's pretty much it for Sunbreaker when it comes to fragments. It's fairly straightforward. Uh, weapons can be literally anything because unlike, you know, Solar Warlock or Arc Hunter, you don't need a one-two punch shotgun. In fact, a one-two punch shotgun doesn't really even do anything on Sunbreaker because uh, Throwing Hammer is considered a projectile melee. So you can really run whatever you want. That being said, uh, loadout wise, I would have, of course, your Syntho loadout, and I would also have an Aeon loadout in case you need to finish her and add. Uh, Titan is relatively safe to finish her as with because you have those sunspots all the time, as well as running something like Proximity Ward uh, makes it really, really safe to get heavy and special finishers for your team. Okay, so now that we've talked about Sunbreaker, uh, I was going to show you guys some Sunbreaker gameplay, but I don't really think you need to see it. I think everyone kind of understands how Sunbreaker works. You just hammer adds repeatedly. doesn't really need to be shown. Um, but besides that, 
um, let's talk about roles. So let's talk about teamwork. Let's talk about team composition. How do Solar Titans play into a team outside of just running an average rocket loadout? What might you put your Titan on? So I think personally, Titan can fit on two different roles uh, better than some of the other classes might be able to. I think Titan is good for tractor because if you're tractoring a boss, if it's a type of boss where you're close, then Titan is likely going to be up there trying to get a Pyrogale proc off using their super before returning to damage anyways. And of course, Titan has access to stuff like uh, Restoration and Sunspots and Healing Grenade, which means that they are an ideal pick to go up and tractor the boss safely without getting nuked. So that's number one. Number two, I would also say that in case sword damage becomes a thing during Crota's end day one in some regard, then having Banner of War which boosts sword damage, um, there you go, Banner of War, which boosts sword damage by a small amount for anybody within a radius, also gives out healing pulses to your team. It's a valuable pick to have over a another, you know, Solar Titan damage super. So Banner of War is also a consideration that I would maybe, maybe look at if a boss is sortable on day one for whatever reason. Um, but that being said, that's pretty much it for Titan in terms of teamwork and roles. Uh, if you're wondering how to do damage on Tractor if you're a Titan, I would say uh, either Fusion Rifles or Sniper Rifles are the play. Now I mentioned this earlier in my uh, Day 1 prep video where I go over weapons and roles, uh, weapon roles not player roles, and I mentioned uh, both Nox Perennial 5 and the Aramite. Both of these are high impact Fusion Rifles that have Envious Assassin and Control Burst, which work great on Tractor Cannon if a boss is medium to short range. If a boss is far away and you're on Tractor, then I would actually recommend something like uh, you know, a Supremacy or a 4 times the Charm Aikilos SR. So that's it for player roles, that's it for damage roles. Let's talk about mods when it comes to armor mods and artifact mods. So artifact mods, we're actually going to be picking pretty much the exact same things that we picked on Solar Warlock. Again, a solar class, so you're going to be using Elemental Orb Solar. And the only real difference here is that you know, maybe you'd be more inclined to use something like uh, Elemental Embrace because Hammer Titan is maybe just that little bit more easier to get that restoration proc than it is on Warlock. But that being said, that's pretty much it. Uh, if you're on Tractor, something I do want to point out is a tip that I got from... Uh, uh, some of the people in my chat. Rapid Fire Ranger, uh, if you remember Sunder and Glare, is a similar mod that weakens enemies from a short distance away, a medium to short, a medium to long distance away, not a short distance, sorry, medium to long distance away. And um, all you need to do is you can tractor a boss, you can even switch your heavy weapon, and then just repeatedly shoot the boss in the head. Um, and it works on immune targets, apparently, according to Mars from my chat. It lasts for 25 seconds and can be refreshed, which is absolutely insane. If you guys didn't know, weakened effects can actually extend Tractor's duration uh, because Tractor is a timer-based debuff, which is absolutely insane. So basically, again, what you do, you just Tractor a boss that's immune, you run away, and then you shoot the boss in the head with a trace rifle, and the boss is now Tractor debuffed for 25 seconds. So this is such an insane discovery, actually, that it kind of negates the need for Tether Hunter unless a boss is so unsafe that you can't track to them whatsoever. It kind of negates the need for Tether Hunter whatsoever. So again, this is a great tip uh, to know about on, um, on Solar Titan if you choose to use Tractor on Solar Titan. Uh, artifact mod-wise, again, everything else is pretty much the same as Solar Warlock. Uh, it's just these mods and then like Elemental Fury. And then maybe something else here, you know, none of these mods are really that significant. And then on Titan, Mono is a great idea. You have an infinitely refreshable powered melee. And then of course, like I mentioned, Rapid Fire Ranger if you're on Tractor, Embrace maybe, or Elemental Munitions. So that's, that's it for Artifact Mods. Let's go over Armor Mods. Armor Mods are going to be almost identical to Warlock. You're going to want 100 Rezil and a 100, um, 100 Discipline. And as for everything else, I would run two hands-on because you're getting a ton of melee kills, basically. Um, three hands-on is insane diminishing returns, so I chose to run a harmonic siphon here in case I'm getting some rocket kills. And then uh, on my Syntheseps, I chose to run heavy-handed to make some orbs, as well as run two impact inductions so that every time I hammer an add or punch an add, I will get some of my healing grenade cooldown back, which obviously I'm going to be doing that a lot. Um, instead of concussive, I chose to use melee damage resist here, uh, which makes sense because, you know, if you're on Titan, you're going to be in melee damage uh, range. And then of course on my boots, this is the exact same thing as Solar Warlock. Stacks on stacks for easier special finishers, a bit of extra, you know, sustain from recuperation, and a scavenger mod matching my rocket. And finally, here again, exact same thing as Solar Warlock. 
distribution, special finisher, and proximity ward so that when I'm finishing an ad with Aeon Soul, or sorry, Aeon Safe in this case because I'm on Titan, or if I'm finishing them for special finisher, I have an overshield so that I'm not vulnerable while I'm practically sitting still. Um, that's pretty much it for Solar Titan. Solar Titan is a lot shorter than Solar Warlock to explain, a lot easier. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know uh, in the comments as usual. And um, yeah, I, I think that's pretty much it. Next, we're going to talk about Hunter, which is a little bit more complex.